beautiful land. We're now into part two. And we're really gonna up the ante. A lot of us are full of hate. I know I am. But on a day-by-day -day basis, I try to keep it hidden. You don't, do you, Dawn? And that's why she's called Dawn Wright Cunt. But can I just say, she's the absolute backbone of this establishment, ladies and gentlemen, and we've all got a lot to learn from Dawn. Not only are we mutual fans of Our Lady J, but our hatred and our detestation is on a level that would kill a beginner. <laughs> Let's get real, ladies and gentlemen. We're only here for a limited spam on planet Earth. And it really is up to us what we do. What is that juggling with the glasses? <laughs> yes, it's very avant-garde. <laughs> yes, it makes a beautiful sort of ambient sound behind. But we're here to talk about what we're gonna do whilst we're crawling across the globe. <laughs> Huge expense to myself. I've written, whose country is this? Because tonight's all about nationalism, if you haven't picked it up already. <laughs> and how important is one's nationality to one's identity? <laughs> to me, fuck all. <laughs> all I know is that I was born and brought up and all the rest of it abused by very small-minded people, ladies and gentlemen, who are more worried about what the neighbours thought than about nurturing. Does that still happen now? Young people! <laughs> what are you thinking now? Do you think you're living in a kind of utopia? Because <laughs> I went to Paul Burston's book launch last night. Yeah, and emboldened by wine, I asked a question. <laughs> what is the relationship of gays in their 20s to the gay activists? of the 70s and the 80s. And he, quite succinctly, answered, there isn't one. <laughs> so you 20-year-olds from your middle-class backgrounds where your parents are saying, look, if needs be, I'll guide his cock up your arse. <laughs> Some of us from a certain generation never had that fucking luxury. Get me? Once I was on a bed in an adjacent room. What are you doing in there? And I declared, I'm fucking somebody up the arse. Do you want to watch? What is the relationship between gays in their 20s and the gay activists of the 70s and the 80s? And Paul Burston, and God bless him, gave a very, very succinct and proficient answer and said there isn't one. I love the fact that there's 20 odd year old cunts out there in the world living their stupid, self-obsessed, <laughs> superficial fucking lives when people went through real hell and had to fight for you to be as complacent as you are. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, you know, mummy and daddy, you know, really cool with me being gay. You know, and if I buy some, you know, like, you know, sort of quasi pseudo faux, um, you know, outre t-shirt, you know, from like H&M or Topshop, you know, they really see the joke. <laughs> psychological illness, <laughs> the absolute non-existence of self-confidence and self-esteem. Oh, come on, it's no secret. In order for me to mount this fucking stage, I'm no stranger to a glass of white wine. <laughs> and those of you that are in your twenties, 
living your self-obsessed lives and repeating history, still stuck in your semi-detached bedrooms, listening to the Smiths. <laughs> Fucking grow up. And realise that that luxury where you can become melancholic <laughs> Where that fucking came from? I'm leaving you with some little thoughts that I hope will chew away your fucking brain stem tonight. I'm doing it motivated by love.